Hmm. Oh, weird. Got a couple of blonde hairs peeking through there. Blonde, not gray. Makeup! Hello friends, welcome back to the show. So glad to see you once again. And if you're new here, get out. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Please stay. This is a great show and I hope you'll enjoy what we're about to do because this is the show where we talk about each and every episode of a cartoon that we grew up on as kids in the 90s and dissect it and discuss it from the point of view of being an adult. Right now we're in a series talking about the new Batman adventures. So if this sounds like something you might be interested in, just click the subscribe button down below while you're there. Might as well hit the like button. It won't hurt anything. And join us as we jump into the episode Mean Seasons, which originally aired on April 25th, 1998. Sorry, but you and I have a date with destiny. Now I gotta admit, this is an episode that I do not have any recollection of. I didn't know the calendar girl. I didn't know the premise of this. I went into it completely blind. Wow, there was a lot that happened in this episode and and a lot of mixed feelings about the different things that came up. But we'll talk all about that right after our 60 second rundown of the episode. And away we go. At a fashion show, a mysterious woman wearing a mask attacks and it captures the host with a very uh, a spring themed attack and leaves a single calendar page as a as a clue when she leaves. And then later on, we have our co car show and a very similar thing happens. The same woman attacks with the Chippendale dancers and she leaves a summer themed uh, a calendar page. Batman and Batgirl cross references and find out that the the calendar that the association with the events and the calendar page led them to believe that the woman is Paige Ramon. Row, a former spokesmodel for these companies, and then she attacks, does the same sort of thing at a the uh, GWB studio show of the new upcoming shows, and Batman goes, swoops in, he fights a dinosaur, and they capture her, and they take her away. Hmm, not bad. It means this calendar girl's days are numbered. So when I first sat down to watch this episode, it starts to play out in a very familiar formula. It's the formula that was used a lot in the 60s Batman TV show where there are these events and they keep getting attacked and then Batman and Robin are called in to solve the, the mystery or usually they know who it is but they just got to figure out how to stop them and then it all culminates to a final battle and then they get locked in. You know, you know the formula, right? So this episode started out in that kind of vein where I thought, okay, well, here's these events. Here's the calendar girl. She's got it in for them. And she has these themed attacks, which I thought were odd. I mean, it was just, it was interesting, I guess. Trying to spoil my summer fun. I kind of rolled my eyes at it and thought, oh, they didn't really have a lot to, to offer to this episode. But then it kind of takes this interesting turn and it's the episode sort of turns into this social commentary which was uh, honestly a little heavy and, and honestly I think it's a little heavier watching it now as it would have been when I was a kid and and truly especially with some of the things that are going on in Hollywood today or in in the world today and and so there was some moments in this episode that kind of set me back and, and I thought, wow, they they I don't know if they even knew how poignant they were being at the time. I do remember pretty girl. Don't you mean woman? She was your age when she made that commercial, bat boy. And, and that's revealed when we find out who Paige Monroe is, the calendar girl the villain. I don't even know really know what her official villain name is, which first I just have to say, like, I always found it really creepy when people wear the mask that has no expression on it. Uh, it would be far less scary if it was like a scary face or a happy face. But the fact that it's just expressionless and there's no emotion on the mask at all and doesn't move when, when uh, she talks is, uh, is always really creepy. And it reminds me a little bit of the Joker's girl from uh, the 89 Batman movie. It's a little bit in that vein. Jack, you said I could watch you improve the paintings. Oh, I'm in trouble now. But it deals with this idea that she was a former spokesmodel for these companies because and she was hired for her youth and her her beauty and and then was fired and let go from these companies when she hit 30. 
and, and became an old woman and ugly and she turned 30 what are you gonna do yeah i'm well past 30 and um which i chuckle because as a kid thinking of being 30 i mean that's an old person anyway um and I, and I still think of myself as a kid but it deals with this real issue of uh, that i think a lot of people deal with and especially women of this this the their value being their beauty and their youth and then once they come out of that that they have nothing to offer and particularly in hollywood and we see this time and time again and and, and so it was interesting to see this episode come out of Hollywood and out of Warner Brothers and out of these these the system that has created this these big stars and these huge celebrities that then age and are a real person and get older are cast aside and turned away and 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 no longer are able to be a part of the industry because they don't have the look or even people that can't get into it to begin with because they're too old or because they're not pretty enough or they're uh, whatever the situation is and it's it's a real issue and it's really sad it's a terrible perception that we put on people and by making their value about what their looks are and, and that shouldn't be part of the equation. Don't cry, Dana. So you weren't picked for the swimsuit issue. It's who you are inside that counts. And then we come to the scene where Batman and Batgirl go to the, uh, Paige Monroe's agent and walk into his office and confront him about Paige. And he is with a, another young actress and is offering to get her a part in the shows because he has a lot of pull with the producers and and it's a very uncomfortable scene to watch as an adult now. The director owes me big time. You'd be surprised the kind of pull I have in this town. Irv Kleinman. And I'm sure as a kid or as kids watch this, it's probably a scene that's laughed about or just brushed off or, and certainly in this period of time in the 90s, that was it was a joke it was a joke to talk about the casting couch or the favors that that actresses uh did to get parts in shows and and things like that uh it's not a joke anymore it's not funny anymore and we've seen this come out in the news lately about uh harvey weinstein or bill cosby or uh these other um industry professionals that are horrible people uh, that are horrible to women and, and people, and, you know, these powerful people that are that are in a position to be able to use their their power and their pull in the industry to get other favors for themselves. And it's just it's it's sickening. It's disgusting. It is it is a, a horrible thing that has come out in the last couple of years that this sort of thing is going on. And the fact that it's in this episode indicates that that is not anything new. This has been going on for years and, and even longer ago than the 90s, I'm sure. But it is a little, it's a little off-putting that it's thrown into this episode as a, as a uh, satire joke or as, a, as an element that is, that we can all laugh about. Um... Because it wasn't funny then, and, and it's not funny now. But it's interesting that that's all part of the story of this person, that it turns to a life of crime because of the way she is devalued based on her appearance or her age. And I do appreciate that when Batman goes into that office, he doesn't pull any punches with this agent. And, and in the writing and in the storytelling of this this whole idea, no punches are pulled. I mean, it, it is pretty direct and pretty out. Can't you see I'm in a meeting? <laughs> the other thing that's interesting in this episode uh, that I discovered when I looked up some information about it is that the voice actress that spoke for Paige Monroe and Calendar Girl, her name's Sella Ward, and she's an actress in Hollywood that during this time was part of a protest campaign against Hollywood in the way that they emphasize people's youth and beauty over their talents uh, and, and the perception that that creates to the public. And this episode, I don't know if this episode was written 
for her or she was part of this uh, if this episode served a purpose to be part of that that campaign but it certainly dovetails into that perfectly because that's exactly what this episode is about and not even just an element of it like the entire thing is about that protest uh which i think is interesting and 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 certainly it's obvious that it was deliberately done whether i don't know which came first the episode or her campaign but certainly it was obvious uh, as to why she was chosen for this role please i'm too young to die Honey, you're never too thin and you're never too young. But outside of that, as an episode for itself, it wasn't that exciting. It felt like the emphasis of this episode was to make that protest and, and to bring that issue to light. But the plot of the story was very formulaic. It was a very... 60s kind of formula. Here's a villain doing these crimes. Batman and Batgirl figure out who it is. They go in, they stop her and lock her up. As an episode itself, as a Batman adventure, there wasn't much of a mystery. She wasn't that interesting of a villain and her gimmicks of using seasons to, to uh, as a theme of attacking people just sort of seemed like a one trick pony to me. So the episode in general was not all that exciting. Dinosaurs have been dead for millions of years, yet they still get parts in movies. It hardly seems fair. It, the tag at the end was interesting, and I sort of have mixed feelings about it, that when that throughout the episode, she wouldn't let anybody see her without her mask on. And when they finally pull it off, that Batgirl comments that, oh, she's still beautiful. No, don't, don't look, please. <laughs> is kind of a neat, you know, the beauty's all in the eye of the beholder and she's really actually is beautiful and and it's too bad she didn't see herself that way. But at the same time, I think it's missing the opportunity. There could have been more of a redemption story in that for her to realize that it doesn't matter how old she is or what her looks are, that, that what's important is what she can offer to society. But then again, she's the villain and she should be captured. And and uh, I don't know. It was an interesting twist at the end, kind of an eye of the beholder, like from Twilight Zone. But um, I don't know. The whole thing just kind of has me kind of conflicted about how it should have been approached. <laughs> she's beautiful. She can't see that anymore. All she sees are the flaws. So when it comes time to rank this episode, I'm, like I said, I'm very conflicted about which direction to go with this. As a Batman episode, as a plot, as a story, as a action-adventure episode, I, I didn't find it that entertaining. As a social commentary, as a way of, of presenting the information of this idea uh, that's going on in Hollywood and around the world, in any industry really, is interesting, and I thought, like I said, I, I I appreciated that they didn't pull any punches for that. The wrap up at the end was, left me kind of unsatisfied. So I don't know, taking all those things into consideration, it fell at the bottom of the list at the number nine spot of my favorite episode so far. Falls Below, You Scratch My Back, which uh, again is, is an episode that isn't as entertaining as some of the other ones and is kind of a straightforward story, but does do a better job of being able to establish Nightwing in the story. But as some, some interesting elements in the relationship between all the characters in that episode. This must be my lucky day. So let me know, is there something that I'm missing about this episode? Um, or am I right on that it was created as a social commentary for this idea in Hollywood? Or is there more to this character that I don't know? Uh, fill in the gaps for me. What am I missing? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. If you want to see more episodes like this, then just hit subscribe because I have new episodes coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. And next Tuesday, I have the episode The Demon Within. So you don't want to miss that. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Andy Canode. I'll see you soon.